built on a fully automated system. I just need one button press to get shots like these. Over 30 prototypes went into building this camera cider that uniquely uses a rotational mechanism to actually track objects as the camera moves laterally across the slider. Object tracking and other slider parameters can also be conveniently programmed through a simple dial and the built-in screen. In this video, I'm going to share how I built and programmed this slider so you can do so as well and all the downloadable files such as the code and the 3D printable files are available in the description down below. I specifically designed this project around the 8mm hardened steel rods and the LM8UU bearings since these are commonly used in 3D printers and make sourcing the parts very easy. Speaking of 3D printers, all the physical parts are 3D printed. Here's how you can assemble them. The first step is to put all the electronics inside the electronics enclosure and put the two nuts inside the enclosure as well. Next assemble the motor mount and have it ready to be attached. Next we make the camera holder by attaching two bearings on opposite sides of the part and sliding two linear bearings into each of the side holes. Next you attach the threaded rods through the motor mount to the electronics holder. You can also attach your smooth rods to the motor mount now. If you want to add your tripod mount, do it now. Lastly, prep the idler side by attaching the ball bearing and mount it to the threaded rods. To finish, you attach your camera to the camera plate and put it inside the camera plate holder. Next, let's move on to the electronics. At the heart of this project are two geared, brushed DC motors with built-in encoders. Both these motors are controlled by the excellent Roboclaw dual DC motor controller and the Roboclaw in turn gets its instructions from the Arduino board. The last electronics are the OLED screen which is used to display the menu, the rotary encoder which is used to navigate the menu and configure it and lastly the button that is used to start and stop the slider movement. Thanks to the Roboclaw motor controller, both the motors can be wired up in a closed loop system which provides greater feedback on the rotational position of both motors and leads to greater reliability which is not traditionally possible in stepper motors without encoders. Now let's talk about programming this object tracking camera slider. Now you see programming was actually the hardest part of this project because from the start I wanted this camera slider to be fully controllable and configurable through a built-in screen. I wanted my code to be compatible with as many screens as possible so I had to use a UAG graphics library. Now the UAG graphics library is great but it relies on a picture loop which can interfere with the Roboclaw serial communication. But I circumvented the issue by pausing the display from updating when the slider was moving and I was collecting data from the Roboclaw and resuming updating the LCD display when the Roboclaw had stopped and you could configure the menus. Moving on, let's talk about how I programmed the rotational object tracking element of this camera slider. This part is actually incredibly easy to implement. Firstly, you take a two-dimensional grid where you must decide where your object is placed. Again, this can be configured using the menu of the camera slider. Based on that, you can draw a triangle to your current location. You can get your current location from the Roboclaw, which tracks the encoder's value. Once you have your current location in the 2D graph, you can use the inverse tangent function to get the angle the camera must be facing to point at your object. This camera angle can be mapped into a positional value that the motor spins to. This is where the Roboclaw really shine for me. By giving the Roboclaw a motor positional value, the Roboclaw can effectively turn your DC brush motor into a servo. But unlike a servo, your DC brush motor now has a lot more torque, a lot more positional accuracy, and can rotate a full 360 degrees in any direction. Furthermore, with the Roboclaw, I was able to tune factors such as PID, acceleration, deceleration, and speed, which is all not possible with a traditional servo. Now we come to the fun part, how to operate this camera slider. Let's start with the menu. The menu I've designed looks like this. Twisting the rotary encoder here allows us to navigate the different options. We can configure the speed, X and Y position in millimeters, and also configure if the slider wants to rotate and track our object, or if we just want to do a simple sliding movement without any rotation, like a traditional motorized slider. To select and configure any of these items, you simply have to click on the rotary encoder. Once you click, you can rotate the rotary encoder to adjust the value, and then click again to set the value and return to the main menu. Once ready, simply press the go button next to the screen and the slider does the rest. Having gone through over 30 prototypes and tons of code revisions, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. The star of the project for me was definitely the Roboclaw motor controller. It made using DC motors so much easier and made integrating them into this project a breeze. I also learned a lot about programming with multiple libraries and ensuring their cross compatibility and also how to better 3D model 
parts for 3D printing. Now this is just a short overview tutorial on how I've made this camera slider. If you want a more detailed build guide, you can find that in the Instructables post that I've linked down in the description below where I have more details and more pictures on how I made this project. Thanks for watching.